Hey there, YouTubers. This is LB from Geek Kings, and today I'm very excited to be sharing with you my unboxing and review of the Lenovo Yoga Tablet 2 with Windows. Now, this is a recent addition to the lineup. Uh, it's a 10.1 inch Windows 8.1 full tablet not running RT. Um, and it's actually quite interesting. It's got some interesting attributes. It's got a kickstand or a hinge that folds out from the back like a Surface Pro. Um, it's also got a keyboard which is included that runs by Bluetooth, which you can connect, you can dock it, or use it uh, separately if you take it off of the device, which is really cool. thing I like about this is you're getting an HD display, 2 gigs of RAM, uh, and full Windows for, I picked it up at $369.99 at Best Buy here locally. So... Uh, this is a very interesting device for users who maybe want to jump into the Windows world of tablets but want a little bit more power, screen size, uh, portability, and flexibility for uh, less than the cost of a Surface but more than some of the cheaper tablets that we reviewed like HP Stream 7. So here it is. I'll do my unboxing and then right after that uh, we'll jump into my review. Thanks for watching. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is. This is the unboxing for the Lenovo Yoga Tablet 2 with Windows. This is the 10.1 inch display version. And here you can see the packaging. Yoga branding. And on the back, we can take a look at the specs. It's got an Intel 4 core processor. I believe it is a Atom processor. 1.86 gigahertz. It's a 1920 by 1200 IPS high definition 10.1 inch display. It's got two gigs of DDR3 memory. This version only has an internal storage capacity of 32 gig, although it's expandable up to 128 gig through SD card. Wi-Fi, Windows 8.1 with Bing, uh, battery, and so forth. So enough with that. Actually, you can see the logo here. It comes with Dolby Sound. And we'll, we'll take a look at how the speaker quality sounds later on in the review. Let's go ahead and get the sucker open. Of course, it's got a bunch of tape here on the side. Actually, that was pretty easy to peel off. It's got some little arrows there. Another one over here. Okay, I think we got them all. Okay. So, first thing we notice here is a Lenovo branded pocket of some sort. Oh, it's actually got a cloth for the screen. This is very nice. Don't normally see these on these tablets. Comes in some little carrying case as well. I'll get to the device in a moment, but over here you can see that it's got the AC adapter. For the wall. Powered by USB. Here you've got the charging cable. It is micro USB. That's easy to do it like that. Micro USB cable. Now here's the device itself. Nice little pull tab. And actually opens up to see the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll take this out and I'll put it over to the side. And let's take a look at what we have underneath the device. We've got quick start guide, warranty, registration information, as well as the Office 365 personal subscription information. This device, I should mention, comes with a year of Office 365 personal 
which is a nice value add. I believe it's worth around $69.99. And underneath the device itself is, is the keyboard. So the thing that intrigues me about this particular device, where I think it's a good value, is the fact that it comes with a keyboard included. Unlike the Surface line, this comes included. It seems to be a little bit more sturdy with some metal components. It's got a chiclet style keyboard, still very thin, and you can use it wirelessly through Bluetooth, which is a really cool feature in my opinion. So why don't we unbox this? There you can see it says Bluetooth keyboard cover. Let's unblock, unbox this so I can show you exactly what it looks like. Okay. There it is. Interesting little keyboard. You've just got product information back here, and that's about it. So, it's a choking hazard. Don't give it to your baby. And here she is. Sort of a sturdy metal plastic kind of thing going on. This is a hinge that goes into the bottom. We'll see if this connects by magnet. I think it does. Trackpad that clicks. Chiclet keys. Branded Lenovo on the back. I'll take this plastic off later, but save the best for last. Here it is. Here is the device itself. You can see it's got Dolby Audio, 15 hour battery life, Office 365. You can see on the left side here, it's got volume rocker, micro USB for charging. This is the power button down here. On the other side, it's got an HDMI out, mini HDMI, which is nice. Head, uh, headphone jack on the bottom, camera. open this up it slides right off very nice feeling not too heavy um, on the back here it's got sort of a rubberized texture and you can see here that it's indicating that this folds out now this is the kickstand and you can put this multiple different ways we can set that down just like that. Very nice, just like the surface. It's even got a hole so you can hang it on the wall if you want, just like this, like a picture. There's the camera. I believe it is a uh, 1.3 megapixel camera on the back, front facing camera, and speakers down at the bottom. All right, so let's uh, power this thing up and see if it's got any juice. There you go, power's right on. <laughs> Taking a while, it might just be because it's on first boot. We'll dig into the performance during the review. And there we go, we're at the setup screen. I'm gonna spend some time with this device, set it up, use it for a little while, and then do a review uh, right here on this video. So stay tuned, and here's my review. All right, so here's the device. I've been able to use this for a few days as my daily driver, performing many of the duties that my tablets would perform, and maybe even a laptop. And I wanted to give you my full review and impressions. And I'll go through pretty much all aspects of this device to help you make that buying decision um, and see if this is worth it for you. So I'll start with the look and feel. As you can see, it's a very interesting look and feel of the device. 
you can see it kind of curves up here into this, I call it a cylinder. Um, and it, it's very thin and light. Like I said, the material on the back here is very nice to touch. It's similar to some other Lenovo laptop covers if you felt them. Very soft touch, um, plastic rubbery kind of feel. On the back of the keyboard, it's a smoother feel, but still a nice rubbery touch to it. Um, I really enjoy holding this thing as a tablet. You know, lots of times when you're holding a rectangular tablet, some of the sharp edges um, kind of dig in to your hands. And with the, the round edge here, it's very ergonomic. I have no problem holding this and walking around like it's a piece of paper. Uh, so kudos to Lenovo for a very interesting design. <clears throat> you can see on the back here, it's got the hinge, as I've mentioned, and this comes out. And now doing this with the keyboard on is actually very difficult. I'll get to that in a moment. But you can bring this out and it pretty much extends, um, I would say, 90 degrees out. And behind is where the SD card goes. I have an SD card in there right now. Right behind the hinge, it's a little flap, very easy to get to. This is actually sort of a pain to close, but it's nice to have expandability options. In terms of weight, this is actually a very light device, especially without the keyboard. I believe it weighs 1.3 pounds without the keyboard. That puts it a little under a Surface 2. I'm not comparing to Surface Pro 3 because Surface Pro 3 is a 12 inch device, it's a 10 inch device, so Surface 2 is one and a half pound, and an iPad Air 2, which is also around the same screen size, comes in slightly under at 0.96 pounds. So overall, very light, very thin device, very happy with the form factor. I don't think your hands would get tired using this, especially with the ergonomic grip on the side. So let me get a little bit uh, into this dock functionality with the keyboard. Um, it basically comes out just like that, and um, it, it slides. So if you move it, it could slide off place and it makes a very, very unpleasant sort of grinding sound uh, when you move things around, especially if you're trying to fold this. So let's say that I was using this as a laptop and I had the hinge out and I had it docked, it sort of clicks in like that. And let's say I wanted to close it and go, I would close it and then I sort of have to struggle to close this. That time was actually a little bit easier. But it's something you have to get used to and just know that it's not solidly in place. The magnets are not very strong. And in fact, if you hold it like this, that stays okay because this is less heavy. Still not rock solid. But if you hold it this way, it's going to come right off. So please do not hold it with one hand. Always hold it with two hands. And just be wary that this is going to slide. You're not going to hurt the screen because it's cradled on this uh, round magnet here. But... Nonetheless, I think they could have done a little bit better with that, maybe just a few pegs underneath to hold it in place. So I'll show you the screen a little bit. Uh, it is a 1920 by 1200 IPS display. It's a 16 by 9 widescreen ratio, which um, people feel differently about this. I think it works in this form factor. Um, even when going into portrait mode, it still looks pretty decent. Uh, performance is, is very good. Everything is smooth. The boot time is, uh, I calculated, about 16 seconds, which is actually very nice uh, for this device. So it boots up very quickly. So one thing I've noticed about this screen is when you bump up the brightness, the colors look very, very nice. Everything's very sharp. It's not a lot of blurring and things like that. But with auto brightness turned on, sometimes the screen can get very dim, almost too dim for the lighting conditions. And I think that's because this is set to be very efficient with the battery life that you have. So just be aware of that. If the screen is looking a little bit dim, you can bump it up for the time being while you're using it. So lapability. Can you use this as a laptop? Meaning, can you actually put it down and use it on your lap without being on a desk? The answer is no. I'm going to be honest. The lapability is non-existent. This hinge is not strong enough. Okay? This thing, as soon as it starts to lean over, the hinge will probably close on you. And it's not deep enough. It's not like a surface where the hinge comes out like that, creates a very strong tent. This is coming from the bottom, so it's got to support all this weight, and it's not very deep. So you're not going to be able to use it on your lap, even with the keyboard. The ability to attach, detach the keyboard is one workaround. So you could put this on a desk, 
you put the keyboard in your lap and type like that since it is wireless so that's one thing to consider and of course if you if you don't need the keyboard at that time you can sort of just hold it down and let it rest on your lap it might take some adjusting and getting used to but overall this is definitely more on the tablet side than the laptop side like a service pro 3. <clears throat> so with the included keyboard let's get a little bit into this because this is a fairly interesting keyboard it definitely doesn't feel too sturdy so if you bend it a little bit it's probably going to break but it's definitely more sturdy in my opinion than the surface pro 3 keyboard it's got definitely some metal in the back here to keep it nice and firm the trackpad material and the material down here is actually sort of a uh, soft sandpaper type material like a leather it extends into the trackpad it's actually very nice to touch and clicking works but if you click in the middle it does not lay flat so you probably can't see it here but if i have it down and i click it the middle the middle of the keyboard sort of bows a little bit so there's something going on here where it just needs to be a little bit flatter to support that. Just a little niggle, not a huge problem. Um, the keys have decent travel. In fact, I think this is better than the Surface Pro keyboard because these are chickled style, they're raised, the spacing is nice. It's a smaller keyboard, but if you use something like an Apple keyboard, you should be used to the keys being pretty close together. Overall, this is a very nice addition and it's included. You don't have to pay the extra money for this keyboard. Now. Can you fold this back? Can you fold it back like a Surface Pro keyboard? Meaning, can you fold this around? Let's say you're using it like this and you wanna put it in tap mode real quick. The answer is no, you cannot fold it back. What you can do, you can attach it the opposite way and fold it back like this, but as you can see, it does not lay flat. So that's something to consider. It also moves around quite a bit. So really, if you wanna use it in tablet mode, take this off and just ditch it that's one drawback to be honest um, with it um, and I think that's just a function of the fact that this is curved right here so you're trading off ergonomics for the ability to really use this like a true convertible I should also mention that the keyboard uses Bluetooth and it needs to be charged separately as you can see here there's an on and off button and a micro USB port to charge it so Making sure that this is charged when you need it is going to be important and another thing to manage. You can see here on the back, this is where the camera is located conveniently right where you hold it. I really like this. It helps to center the pictures when you're holding it as a tablet. This is actually an 8 megapixel camera. I said it wrong in the unboxing, but after doing some more research, 8 megapixel rear, which is not too bad for a tablet. And on the front, the camera is right here, and it's actually a 1.6 megapixel front-facing shooter. So it's a little bit better than what you're going to see on some run-of-the-mill tablets out there, especially for the price. So here's the question that I know you all want answered. Can I game on this tablet? The answer is yes, but it depends on what, the, what kind of games you're playing. Um, I did try out Minecraft and Civ 5, and here are the impressions. Okay, so let's talk about the game and performance of this uh, tablet. I tested two games on it, Minecraft and Civilization 5. I'm running Minecraft here. And overall, the performance isn't too bad. Um, as you can see, my character is able to move around just fine. The colors look pretty good, the sharpness, resolution, so forth. I left this on default settings, except I bumped up the render distance to the maximum. I think it's 16 chunks. And I have to say the performance is um, a little disappointing, but there again, I did bump it up to the maximum. Uh, these mountains back here took quite a while to draw in. Uh, and in fact, um, I can show you the frames per second up here is actually only about 15 or 16 uh, when you're running with maximum draw distance. Let me try to go to the top of the hill to show you how long it would take to draw in. And then I will bump down the draw distance to something probably a little bit more reasonable and see how the frames per second gets impacted. Okay, so here I am. Um, looking over a new area of the map and I can see <clears throat> new terrain being built very slowly over here it'll probably take a while for all of this to load and you know honestly that that's kind of to be expected with the specs in this machine I have to say I don't really hear a fan kicking on the device 
uh, is not hot yet so far, so I'd say it's doing pretty good. Now let's do this. Let let's change the draw distance uh, to about half of that, about eight chunks. So here we are down to eight chunks. And if I go to move around a little bit, it's actually a lot smoother. So I think that goes to show that um, you're going to have to sacrifice some of the detailed rendering of terrain that's further out in order to get some better performance. I don't think it'll be a huge deal, but in Minecraft, part of the fun is, uh, you know, taking a look at some of the nice vistas around. If we take a look at frames per second now, it's actually pretty interesting. Uh, it is now fluctuating between 18 and 20, 22. So we've seen a little bit better performance by reducing that distance, still running in full screen at maximum resolution. But I have to say, there's really not a whole lot of noticeable lag or bugginess with it. Um, some of the inputs are lagging a little bit, I have to say, and I'm not sure what that's due to, whether it's Bluetooth or the game itself, but your mileage will vary. You might have to play with the settings a little bit, but I would say that this is more than capable of running Minecraft at this point. Okay, so here I've got Sid Meier Civilization V running. Just to give you a quick rundown of the video settings that I will be testing this with, I have it set to full screen. Set to max revolu uh, resolution, 1920 by 1200. Anti-aliasing uh, is off. And I have most of the settings over here set to low or medium, except for texture quality, which is set to high. So let's jump into the game and see how it actually all works. Okay, so we're in the game now, and I've just started as the Egyptians. <clears throat> Graphics look uh, sharp to me. Zooming could be a little bit smoother. Moving around the map actually is pretty smooth. I don't know what the frame rate is and I'm not sure how to check it right now. But I have to say I'm not seeing uh, really any slowdowns now. I don't have a large number of units on the screen. So I'll have to keep playing to show you that. So here have I got my first city. I'm starting to get a little bit more activity on the screen. If I zoom in... Seems to keep up fairly well. Now, the thing that I actually like about Civilization V is it has a Windows 8 touchscreen mode. So you can do things like direct all the movements uh, in the game with just your finger, which is nice on a device like this where you don't have to keep your keyboard or a mouse with you at all times. So let me dem demo the touchscreen mode for you. Let's say I have a unit here. I can double tap on it. It shows the number of moves I can do. If I want to bring him up there, I just click that and he moves. I can also pinch and zoom into the map. And I can also move around the map just like this. Um, there are also some other um, cool gestures you can do, but this is just a nice little addition since not too many games are optimized to run on a touchscreen. And this game is not extremely graphics intensive. So you should be able to get away with running this on most systems that are out there. Overall, I think you'll have a fine experience with Civilization V on this. Uh, you could always lower some of the resolution to get a higher frame rate, but it seems to be running okay. Minecraft ran just fine. So overall, I'm actually very satisfied with the game performance. I can't really ask for too much more from a device in this form factor with this amount of processing power, RAM, and storage. Now, I wouldn't expect you to be able to play... Skyrim or something like that at the highest settings, but if you're feeling lucky, you can go and try it on some of the low settings and let me know if that's been working out for you or any of the other high profile uh, graphics intensive games out there because I want to hear. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at gaming performance, I wanted to wrap up my review with taking a look at battery life, overall performance, and what's the value, you know, should you buy this device? For battery life, Lenovo claims that this device gets 15 hours, and as we all know with battery life, it really depends on how you use it. So I don't know what test they use to get to 15 hours, but I have to say that I've definitely seen 15 hours, even 18 hours out of use from this device. Um, it will definitely last you for two days of average, of average usage, and what I mean by that is web browsing, even a couple hours of Netflix, 
Windows 8 games, even graphics intense games like Sonic Dash and Asphalt 8. I used it for about 9 hours one day, went into standby overnight, only dropped a few percentage points overnight in standby, and then used it for another 9 hours in the same exact way as the day before. So I'm seeing between 15 to 18 hours depending on usage, which is very, very good for a device that's this powerful and this big, and that's without auto brightness turned on for half that time. So very impressive. So performance, applications do load fairly quickly. Talking about Windows 8 applications here, I'll just walk you through one right now. This is the weather, you can see that loaded up very quickly. I can go into a, uh, another place to look at the weather in Munich, Germany, one of my favorite places to visit. That loads up very, very nicely. I can go into the Money app, load up a, a stock, Microsoft right here, loads up extremely quickly, no sluggishness or lag there. Traditional Windows applications load very fast. Um, Office only takes about 10 seconds to load in my testing. Browser rendering is very quick. I even ran the Office Online apps to see what a very complex um, control would look like in the browser. And I have to say I'm very impressed with the performance of this little guy. In terms of game boot up and load times, probably not what you're going to see on a, um, a full powered gaming rig, obviously. But it's acceptable. It's not out of line with comparable laptops. Uh, I would not use this for video editing, obviously, with only 2 gigs of RAM. Not a lot of on barred storage either, so definitely not a video editing device. Maybe some very, very light photo editing. Um, I wouldn't get any kind of complex rendering or 3D rendering, um, especially given some of the scaling issues we've seen uh, with high DPI displays. So definitely not um, recommended to do that. But still, if you need to doctor up some home pictures, uh, you can definitely do that. Now, sound quality, something I didn't touch on. Uh, here are the two speakers, stereo sound speakers, better than expected. I have to say, usually a tablet of this size, I, I wouldn't expect much. Uh, they're powered by Dolby inside. They're very clear, very crisp. Um, I use this with Spotify, Songs, uh, and also on the video games and Netflix. I have to say, even at the highest setting, it only started to distort very, very much at the top, at the high range of uh, the sound. But on your average everyday listening range, very, very clear, not tinny, not hollow sounding at all. So kudos to Lenovo for that. So last but not least, should you buy this device? I can't recommend against this device. I really have to say I'm extremely impressed with this. This is probably my favorite 10 inch Windows tablet maybe even 10 inch tablet period, if I'm being honest. It's extremely powerful for its size and form factor. I really like the ergonomics of holding it like this. Comes with a keyboard, HDMI out. I mean, if you just look at the onboard components of this device and what you actually get in the package compared to competitors, uh, I think that Lenovo has really put together a valuable uh, device here. HDMI out, comes with Office 365, comes with the keyboard. These are important perks that you're looking for when you go and buy a tablet. Now again, this costs $370 compared to an iPad Air 2, which can cost upwards of $500. Doesn't include a keyboard, doesn't include all the same outputs and amenities as this device does. So that's something to consider when you're looking to go buy a tablet, of course your uh, love or not so much love for Windows 8 operating system is independent of this device. I'm not judging it based on the OS it runs. I think in terms of the OS itself, it's gonna get better with Windows 10, but it does run this OS extremely fine no matter how you feel about the user experience. Now, if you've already got a laptop and you're happy with it, I'm not sure I can recommend this unless you really, really want a tablet. If you're looking to get into the tablet game, this might be a good one. If you've got a laptop, this is not going to replace your laptop. This is not a Surface Pro 3. So just remember, now, do you want a tablet form factor with the power of a lower end or mid end laptop? Then yes, this is definitely the device for you. It gets you about 55, 60% of the way there with a laptop. 
maybe even a little bit more depending on how you use yours. But for me, this is really a tablet first and you can get some work done on it. Uh, more work than other tablets, uh, absolutely, uh, in the price range. But I would say that this is just mainly for a great first class media consumption experience with a little bit of media creation. So to me, it really depends. You have to do your homework and research, but this is not a bad device. This is at the top end for value and performance, in my opinion, for 10 inch Windows tablets. So there you have it. There's my review of the Lenovo Yoga 2 tablet for Windows. Just came out, I believe at the end of last year. Very, very interesting device. I think Lenovo has a winner on its hand. So thanks for sticking with us and watching this. I know this was a long video, but I wanted to cover every aspect of the device so you can make the most informed buying decision. Send us your feedback, your comments, ask me any questions around the device. I'd be more than happy to do an Ask Me Anything session um, if you want to get a firsthand experience from me on what it's like to use it in the ways that you would use it. Make sure to share, like, dislike, comment on this video. We really hope you subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this for you. And make sure to follow us on Twitter at Geek Kings for the latest information on what we're doing here at Geek Kings. Once again, my name is LB. Thanks for watching.